using the Brave Viking stamp set, Give Up World dies, and the Harvest dies. We're also using this beautiful color combo, which I have over on my blog. So if you want to um, visit my blog, there's a link below the video. There's project sheets there, and I have a little color splash diagram for you to post in your favorite color insp inspiration Pinterest board. Here we're using the little die from the Harvest dies, and I'm lining up this masking tape over my cardstock in about the area that I want to mask and, and ink blend. I put this die cut down because I was trying to get a feel and an idea of where the die cut is going to cut because I want it to cut in the water, if that makes sense, because I'm doing a sky here, kind of like a sunset sky, and then um, water on the bottom. I'm using Cajun Craze Pumpkin Pie and Crushed Curry to do my ink blending, along with Stampin' Up's blending brushes. They have the softest, br softest br bristles. I can talk today, I promise. And they are just beautiful. So if you need ink blending brushes, there are um, some available through Stampin' Up and they are $12 for a pack of three. Here I'm using Balmy Blue and Pacific Point ink and I am ink blending the bottom. And then I have a strip here that's a half inch long by, I believe this is four and three quarters and I ink blended that with uh, Pacific Point. Now I need to die cut a slit in the bottom of this card stock. This card stock, by the way, is cut at three and three quarters by five. We're gonna use the stamp and cut and emboss machine to die cut that. And then we are moving right into some stamping. Now you might be thinking, ooh, this, this video is chopped up a little bit or there's some stuff cut out. This video was originally 58 minutes long. <laughs> So I had to do some pretty creative editing to get everything to fit into the video. So here we go. Uh, we're inking up our little Vikings and stamping them down. And then I'm going to actually color the Vikings off screen. I ended up not coloring them on screen because again, to make these two um, interactive cards took quite a long time. And then coloring is also a slow process. So I thought I would just color them off screen and enjoy doing that but I did color the little um, ship for you on screen and you're going to see that here in a minute. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink for my stamping and then we're going to color with Stampin' Blends markers and then we're going to assemble the rest of this card. Now if you want all of the information on the measurements for this card they are in the project sheet which is linked below this video. So below this video, the, there's a link called measurements and supplies. You go to that, it's gonna take you to my blog and over on my blog, there will be two project sheets. Now these aren't like my project sheets that I have for my fun fold cards because there's no fun fold measurements here, but I have provided all the measurements and I've also provided tips and tricks for you uh, for making these interactive cards. Here I'm needing to notch out a little area in this track because I need my recipient to be able to get a hold of the little pull tab and pull it. So um, I always recommend if you're going to create that, that you notch it out. Now here I'm lining up my um, pull tab with that notch and with the edge of the paper and then I am adding my foam strip behind it. That way this stops and it doesn't just fall out the other end, right? And here we're using the foam strips to create a track. My two favorite things to use foam strips for are shaker cards and these types of pool cards. Here you can see I'm continuing to build that track. I don't want this pull tab to wiggle around a bunch. I want it to stay fairly straight. So you need to line the inside of the cardstock with something. You could even line it with other pieces of cardstock if you wanted to, just so that that pull tab area doesn't wiggle and move around as you're pulling it in and out. 
You also don't want to make it too tight. You don't want your recipient to have to fight to pull the little tab and make their little ship move across their card. So be mindful when you're adding your track strips that they are not too tight and not too loose. Okay, now that I've done this, I can finish doing um, the assembly of this card. And basically all you have to do is remove all the adhesive backing and I'm layering this piece onto a four by five and a quarter piece of basic white cardstock. This is really a great card to show you that you can make interactive cards without having special die sets. Now the second card we're going to make today, we do use a special die set that is made specifically for interactive cards. But this one here, honestly, as long as you have a die that you can cut as a strip, such as this one, this I actually went through all of my die sets and I looked for something that would have a nice size slit but that would also lend itself well to um, being nice and straight and being able to die cut it. I went and grabbed the Give It A Whirl dies, which is the ones we're gonna use a little bit later here. And I cut a black arrow so that I could put that on this pull tab so that whoever receives this card will see the arrow and realize that that is how they pull um, that, that that's why this is there, right? It's interactive, so they need to be able to see it. So here I wanted to add my little ship because obviously to me it makes sense that my ship would be the thing that would be moving across this card in the water. You could really do a lot of things to enhance the water here, by the way. Um, I just made the decision not to. Um, you could add some white um, kind of like wave lines with a white gel pen. You could do some embossing. You could do some um, water lifting. There's lots of different things you could do. I just was fine with it being a nice flat um, ink blended surface. So here I've removed the adhesive and I'm going to then add my little ship to that adhesive. And now we have the pull mechanism and it won't go past where it's supposed to because We've got those adhesive strips on the inside. The other thing um, that I recommend when you're making these kinds of cards is that you use whatever you use is a moving object and you want to make your pull tab move in the direction the object is facing. So here you can see that my ship is facing to the left so I made my pull tab so that it would move to the left. All right next up is the give it a whirl card and I am going to show you how I made this one. This one's even easier than the first one because it has dies that are already ready to cut for you. If you need the Give It A Whirl dies, I do have them linked in the description below. Here I'm showing you the in colors that are going to be going away. In uh, just a couple of months, we are going to be getting a new catalog in May and in that new catalog will be five new beautiful in colors and that means five in colors are retiring so these items always end up selling out so if you want them i highly recommend you visit the link below my video where it says measurements and supplies and i've taken the time to link on my blog all of the in color products that are retiring so if you want any of those in color products that scroll all the way to the bottom of my blog post, you can purchase them there. These are the Give It A Whirl dies and these are interactive dies and you can just use these to cut and do all kinds of fun stuff. We're also using the Kite Delight stamp set and some Stampin' Blend markers and we're going to make a cute card. We're using the New Horizon Designer Series paper there that you're seeing. And I thought it would be cute to make it look like these kites were floating in the air and then have our spinner go through that. Now when you use designer series paper, my recommendation is to stack it up and then cut a basic white, but I needed to also cut the same slit here or the hole. So I had to line this die up on top. And then what I did is I taped everything in place with my post-it note tape. 
I also used the post-it note tape for the masking at the beginning of this video. And if you need some of that post-it note tape, it is linked below this video. You can purchase it on Amazon. So here I'm going to run this through the die cut machine. And then this is just going to provide that second rectangle die on the white cardstock. Now, if you're using just cardstock, you don't really need to cut two of these like I've done here. The reason I cut two is so that I could glue that designer series paper to this other basic white one that I've cut to give it a little bit more sturdiness because that designer series paper is very thin and it's not gonna hold up well going through the mail um, or as a function for the uh, wheel that we're gonna put in place. So I wanted there to be a little bit more sturdiness to this card mm -hmm. and that's how I achieved it was to just simply cut a layer of basic thick white cardstock to glue the designer series paper to. Okay, we're gonna hop back and forth between the card and story time. If you're new to my channel, I do on um, every Saturday have story time where we just chit chat about things that are going on in my life and I always look forward to hearing what's going on in your life or stories you have to tell me in the comments below the video. If that's not appealing to you and you don't really care for that, that's okay. You can either hit the mute button or you can skip on by this video. We don't mind, our feelings won't be hurt. But this is where I hang out with my friends and we get caught up. All right, so uh, story time, what is happening? And here, by the way, I'm using an adhesive remover just to get rid of some of that tackiness from the post-it note tape. That adhesive remover is linked in the description below the video as well. Um, it's been a wild week. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, it's been a fun week, a good week. Nothing bad has happened. Well, that's not entirely true. There's been a couple of faux pas, but for the most part, it's been a good week. So my daughter started horseback riding this week and, um, she has wanted to do horseback riding since she was very young. When she was five, she used to ride horses and, so for those of you who are new or haven't been around for a long time, may not know, I broke my back horseback riding. And um, it happened in the first seven months of my marriage. And my husband took care of me for four months in a body cast. And it was rough. Okay. It was a very difficult time for us. <laughs> and so he has, a, oh, really quick back to the card. Here, I'm going around the hole in the middle. I'm holding my top over and then I'm taking a pencil and I'm very lightly drawing rectangles, tracing them so that I know exactly where I can stamp so that I will not end up stamping into the view of the other object I'm going to stamp. Does that make sense? So this is just a guide for me to know where I need to stamp. Um. So anyway, that's a story in another video um, about breaking my back here. I'm trying to show you the little square uh, triangle, uh, good grief, rectangles that I drew. Um, anyways, so my husband has a bit of a, mm, de he detests horses, basically. He thinks they're a waste of time, a waste of money. And we know multiple people who have been injured on them. We have a good, good friend who got bucked off her horse and shattered her ankle. It was extremely bad. And so um, anyway, all of that is to say he's not a super big fan of the horse thing. And so for years, um, my daughter was basically not allowed to ride. She, you know, he just was not a fan. And it's something she has wanted to do for a really long time. Here, back to the card, I am masking portions of this sentiment because the whole sentiment will not fit in one rectangle. So as they spin it, they're going to read the entire sentiment. Plus, we're going to do a little sunshine in Bumblebee ink, one of those retiring inks, which I'm very sad about. So he she sat down with him and had a talk with him about the fact that she's 13 now she knows there's risk involved but she'll be very careful wearing a helmet um taking lessons from a very experienced equestrian 
um, which is my friend. And um, so she feels like it's time that she should be allowed to do this. And he agreed. Um, basically, he said, you know, in a few years, you're going to be out of our house and on your own anyway, and you'll be able to make your own decisions. And if this is something you want to do, I now feel like you're at the age where you understand the risk involved in what you're doing. And basically, you can get hurt doing all kinds of things. So he said yes. So she has already had two horseback riding lessons in one week. And um, she is absolutely over the moon, head over heels in love with the whole thing. So we'll see if that lasts. You know, a lot of times when we're young, we get into something. I know I did. And it would be something I was really excited about at first. And then as you continue to do it and you're like, oh, this is a lot of work or this really isn't my deal. And that's kind of what's interesting about my story. And we won't go way into that today, but I really never... I've always loved horses. I've always thought they are beautiful, but I've always been a little bit afraid of them. And I think that I always felt like I had to ride horses or be involved in horses when I was young because that's what all my friends did. So um, I, I just did it anyway kind of thing. And when I got hurt horseback riding, I was really bullied actually by, by an uncle um, into riding the horse that I rode. I really didn't want to ride that day and I kept resisting, but I kind of got bullied into the situation. So lessons learned, um, don't let people bully you and, and don't let um, your gut instincts be ignored. Go with them, listen to them, listen to your gut. So um, here is that little spinner. It says, your friendship is so uplifting. And then there's a little sunshine, which I think is so cute. And I love how the sunshine is like coming up in this sunset and it's like showing just halfway through. It's very cute. So here's how you assemble. So you need a brad in the center and then you're just gonna add your spinner. And then the next step is to add dimensionals to the back of this and pop this up on a card base. And that's it. Like, it's so simple. So the rest of this card is just decorating and story time and hanging out. That's why I put this card last so that we could have time to visit. So um, anyway, so she started horseback riding this week, but she also is coaching for swim team, which we've talked about. So that started a couple of weeks ago. This week, there was some malfunction with the filter at the swimming pool so they actually canceled swim for Tuesday and Wednesday night um and she only went and coached on Thursday night she's already suggested that maybe one night a week she doesn't need to coach which I laid the hammer down on that and I was like oh no 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 swimming comes first horses come second so you know she's just in that mode new endeavor and She's excited about it and she thinks she would much rather be doing that than swimming because swimming's old news. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you right now, swimming is what will give her a job in the summer when she's old enough because you can lifeguard in the summer. So here I'm using Calypso Coral and Pale Papaya for my um, kites. So... Anyway, we are doing that, and then um, we just had, it was just a wild week, like getting her all to her places, and then we did attend today, as I'm recording this, we've already attended um, our friend's funeral, the man who passed away I talked about last week, and it was, it was a beautiful funeral, but it was very heavy and um, it was just, a, it is heavy. And so it made my heart a little heavy. So anyway, we stopped on our way home from the funeral at Safeway and we stopped at Petco and Lowe's because my husband is finishing the deck for the swimming pool and I needed to grab a few things and there were sour cream and cheddar chips at the front checkout and I just could not pass them up, you guys. I bought a whole bag and I've already eaten half the bag. That is called eating your feelings. In case anybody is wondering, uh, that's what that is. 
<laughs> so anyway, I ate some feelings today and um, my friend Jenny is coming over this evening and we're planning to soak in the hot tub, have a glass of wine, have dinner, relax, enjoy. I'm very much looking forward to that. She is a really cool person to hang out with. And then um, the rest of the weekend is just kind of whatever. I'm probably going to work on my garden. Um, we did have a friend who, a close friend of mine, whose um, daughter, she calls me Aunt Wendy. She is having to put her um, puppy down, her dog down today. And so that's been a little heavy all week because I've been back and forth trying to help them with different stuff getting answers for what was wrong with this dog ends up the dog does have cancer so she is going to have to be put down um there's just nothing they can do she's she's way past anything they could do so that's pretty sad but um so it's just been a busy week lots of phone calls lots of work lots of running around with the kid and you know I wouldn't change it for the world I really wouldn't I, you know, someone said to me something about being busy with my daughter and I thought, you know, there is going to come a time very soon where I'm not going to have this busyness anymore and I won't be running around taking her places and getting her to her functions and watching her do things and she'll be striking out on her own in this world and I will take the busyness and the exhaustion any day of the week. Um, I'm trying to soak it up and soak up every moment that I'm given with her while she's still at home. I mean, I know she's still going to need us and we're still going to be very involved in her life and she'll probably live at home for a long time because hello, living in California is very freaking expensive. So she's probably not going anywhere once she's in college. She, I'm sure she'll either live with us or she has talked about seeing about living with her Aunt Laura who lives closer to the college she wants to go to. But at any rate, we'll see the kid. Um, I don't think she's going to be disappearing right after high school graduation. But who knows? I mean, maybe she will. Who knows? Okay, here are the two finished cards. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really enjoy hanging out with you. If you need any of the Stampin' Up! supplies I shared today, shoploveandstampin.com. And don't forget to go to my blog at the link in the description below the video under measurements and supplies and get your free project sheet.